Welcome to Science with Soul. I'm Dr. Laurie Valentine and the host of this program. I'm a physician, evidential psychic medium, international keynote speaker, and the author of Med School After Menopause, The Journey of My Soul. This podcast was inspired by events from my own life, and as I have journeyed through life, it has taught me that we're part of a greater divine web of interconnectedness. I have walked the path of illness, healing, and transformation, and after experiencing two near-death experiences, I became clairvoyant, clairaudient, and clairsentient, and I was guided to attend medical school at the age of 54. In this podcast, we will meet many different types of doctors, healers, spiritual leaders, educators, and other interesting souls. And it is my hope that you will gain information from this podcast to help create a path of healing your own life physically, emotionally, and spiritually, and bridge the gap between science and soul. Welcome to Science with Soul. I am Dr. Lottie and the host of this podcast. Today, I am so delighted to introduce Mia Ottosson from Sweden, which is one of the Scandinavian countries in Northern Europe and also happens to be the country where I was born and raised. Mia has been working as a professional medium for over 20 years, and she is the only medium from the Nordic countries who is a tutor as well as a course organizer at the prestigious Arthur Findlay College in the United Kingdom, the world's foremost college for the advancement of spiritualism and psychic science. She also holds a certificate through the Spiritualists National Union, SNU, for public speaking and demonstrating. Mia also works with psychic and spiritual art by creating spirit portraits and soul pictures, also known as orographs. In Sweden, she is the president of the spiritual organization Speak of Spirit. She runs the organization together with her good friend Karina Tanaskovic, and together they're trying to put spiritualism back on the map once again, which means free of influences and philosophy from any other religions. She's trying to raise the bar of knowledge and believes strongly in cooperation and community. Speak of Spirit education is influenced from her own hard training, and she often works alongside with her colleagues from Arthur Findlay College. Mia has an abundance of experience, not only from life, but also from working as a medium for over 20 years. She believes strongly that you can never learn enough and that it is an ongoing journey to try to understand yourself and the work of a medium. Quality, ethics, and morals are so important and there are no excuses for poor work. The responsibility is always with the medium. And if we take away the excuses and take responsibility for our work, not being so afraid of doing it the wrong way, we would have many more good mediums today. Welcome Mia, I'm so excited to have you on the podcast today and having you share your knowledge and experience with, us, with the audience today. So welcome Mia. Thank you. I'm so excited. And it's so nice to be with you, Lottie. <laughs> so you have been working as a medium for over 20 years. Can you yeah. tell, yeah, tell the audience, what is a medium? What, how does that work? What well, do mediums I think, do? I think it depends who you ask, actually. But for me, uh, medium... If I go back in time, I thought it was uh, very special people with very special gifts. Today, I think a medium is someone who have the fortune to be able to connect to the deceased ones, to our loved ones who has passed to the other side, so to speak. So for me, that's the medium. But I also believe that the medium is a soul worker. And uh, I believe that every medium should strive to be the kindest and be helpful towards all human beings, animals, the planet, whatever. I think uh, we can be quite narrow-minded with the mediumship. I think that we are just going to give messages to people. But for me, mediumship and my, to living my medium, so to speak, is by being a good person. Mm -hmm. 
so it's it's almost like a, you're also a little bit of a counselor in a sense in a lot of way yes but when you mention just medium it also means that you have the the talent and been practicing and training to connect with the, your loved ones in the spirit world mm -hmm. so what's what's the difference of an evidential medium and somebody who says they're a medium what's the difference between that those statements I think um, also it depends what country you're referring to because for me a medium is a medium when they connect to the loved one and you can do an evidential reading but a lot of people call themselves medium by just reading energy and I suppose that's what the medium do besides psychometrize energy in a lot of ways but for me, an evidential medium, when you ask me that question, is actually giving facts about the loved ones who has passed to the spirit world. And uh, otherwise, you can see it as I'm reading you, your energy, or the environment we are in, in a house or whatever. Mm -hmm. So tell, can you give us an example? What happens when somebody books a session or a reading with you and they say, you know, my mom passed on to the other side and I want to speak to her. What happens? So, uh, when they come to me, and uh, for me it's very important if they are in bereavement, because if they lost their mother, then it's my job. And if she is the one that mostly wants to talk to, my job is to actually bring mother through and give evidence about mother. I don't bring in grandmother then, you know. For me, that's very important. And I think that is because if you look, I have so many uh, students or friends who have lost their children and they've been to so many mediums and there's a lot of excuses from the medium and they say, no, I'm sorry, your son is not here or your daughter is not here, so you, you have to speak to grandma instead. And I find that an insult. I don't want to pay a lot of money if my kids died to speak to my grandmother mm -hmm. if I lost my son. So if it is an evidential and they're looking for someone specific, I wouldn't charge any money if I wouldn't be able to bring through the contact they're actually looking for. And here there is a lot of arguments between mediums, okay? And a lot of my colleagues won't agree with me and a lot of them do agree with me. So I think, uh, knock, knock on wood, I've been working with this philosophy for over 15 years now and it has never failed. Anyone who has come who are in bereavement and they lost someone they really love and want to speak to, they've always been there. So I believe personally, and this is my way of thinking how mediumship is working, that like in ordinary day life we connect with people differently. So a lot of people I meet, I connect immediately to and I like them and I get along with them. And it's the same with the energy with someone passed to the spirit. So if I just open up to anybody, I might connect easier with your grandma than your mom. So I stick to the grandma because it's easier. But if you are in bereavement, I have to make an effort and try to connect with that energy, even if it's not the easiest one. So I think it's important for a medium to do the best you can, so to speak. And if you can't do it, just say, I'm sorry. It's not the spirit fault. It's my fault if I'm not doing it mm. right. So when you speak of um, connecting to the energy, and it might be easier for you to connect to the grandmother energy uh, yeah. instead of some other energy, is, um, can you explain that uh, a little more? So is, do they have their own energy in the, in the spirit world? You, you can feel that? or Yeah, because if... Uh, if your mom hypothetically should go to the spirit world, and I'm just making this up, okay? She was a horrible person. She was down in drugs. She was beating you up and she was horrible, you know? If she would come back as love and light, you wouldn't recognize her, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, so certain energies from, who are supposed to the spirit, I will have a recognition because I've lived my own life, you know? And what I have experienced in my life, and if that's similar, is similar to the people I'm speaking to in the spirit, it will be much easier to work with them. So I think that's why a lot of medium is, uh, it's easy to be in your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. 
so to speak. And it's also very easy. I'm sounding very plumpy. I know that. But uh, I don't mean to be rude in any way. <laughs> but it's very easy if you are insecure as a medium and you haven't done your training and you're feeling confident in what you're doing. If someone is coming and they are about 40 years old, it's very easy to bring a grandma in instead of a mom <laughs> or a daughter, you know, because you will have a hit much easier. <laughs> so I think... Personally, I think mediumship is very easy. I think it is our fears, our insecurities, our ego, and everything else that comes between us from doing a good job. Mm -hmm. And I think we all have that. Yeah. So sometimes um, when people have a reading, um, this is just what I've heard from other people, yeah. and uh, they don't always recognize the spirit that is coming through. Um, because they feel they're looking for certain uh, images in their mind of things that they did may have done with that person. So let's say uh, they were always making gingerbread cookies with their mom and that's their fond memory. And so they're kind of waiting for the gingerbread cookies to show up, but there's all this other evidence that's coming through. So how, how do you, uh, how do you explain that, that it's not always the image maybe that they have in their head? Uh, I explain it because I believe that uh, regardless what the spirit is trying to tell me, it has to go through my mind and my experience. And if I have uh, not a lot of experience on certain things, I won't maybe pick that up as easy as other things. So, for example, well, I, when I work, if, if I bring in a spiritual contact for you and you will ask me a question, for example, what's the name? What did I work with? I know that my mind will come in immediately and I want to please. So I will try to get that for you. And then I know I might making it up. So I don't allow questions the first 20 <laughs> minutes I'm working because uh, then I, I don't want to interfere with that because I know I'm trying to please the people. And uh, it's very easy to, to let your mind dwindle away so to speak. Yeah, the mind, the mind races away. I could see that yeah. as a problem. Um, so when you do um, a reading, how do, people, um, how do people take those messages from the spirit world? Is it, do they usually, um, you know, get the information that they want? You know, what happens with these, the people that get these readings? Do they, do they always recognize who is coming through or do you, or is there times yeah. when, when the, the connection with you and the spirit might not jive because of your, because you were talking about your life experiences and you kind of have to understand uh, the spirit in that way. Um, so the people that are asking for a reading, what if they don't recognize the information uh, that you're bringing through and they're not sure i don't know is that my is that my mom or it could it be my grandmother or could it be my sister or maybe it's my friend if that happens i'm doing a very bad job okay <laughs> <laughs> so, for me it's very important to know who i have with me and the first thing i do if someone comes from an evidential sitting is that i'm scanning the energies around me and I'm looking for the closed ones. I look for mom and dad. I look for brothers and sisters. I look for if there's a younger energy, if there's a child there. So I know who I'm speaking with from the beginning. And if I say, for example, I have a mom here. She died from the cancer. It started within the breast. She went through chemo. Uh, she had a couple of years when she was healthy and then it came back and she couldn't make it if that doesn't fit a mom then i go back and see immediately where did i go wrong did i make the relationship wrong did i feel mom because if i felt mom and it's not mom it's someone else who should have been like a mom for them if i get the mom through my head and this is just how i learned over my experience if i hear the word mom within my mind i have to go back and see who's talking about mom because then i know it's an issue around mom and that's where maybe the problem is what i've been speaking about or with the other one i'm talking to but if they don't recognize 
if that should happen that I don't recognize anything after my four or five statements, I don't go on. I, I'd rather say I'm sorry than I have made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Lucky enough, it hasn't happened for a long, long time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, it's about to happen. It's, you know, and sometimes some people, when they come for a sitting, they are so in their own little space, like you say, they're looking for that ginger cookie and I only want to hear about that so they can't think about outside their own box. But for me, it's important then to not blame the sitter. It's my job as a medium to open the mind and see outside <laughs> that little box. Otherwise, I shouldn't charge for my work, so to speak, right. because that's my profession. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. there are, I mean, there are times when uh, people aren't sure and, um, you know, I'm thinking back being at Arthur Finley College myself, studying and, and learning about this. And in the beginning, I, I was with my friend and I said, that's, that's your mom. That's your grandma. But I recognized her mom before she recognized her mom because we, we grew up together. And it's just funny. And that's what led to these questions that sometimes people are kind of set in they're looking for certain things and they, even though the medium is doing the right thing and, and somebody else may say, Hey, that's, that's your mom. It's yeah. obvious because of these, you know, the, the messages that are coming through. So sometimes it could be that the person just is so set on that gingerbread cookie and they're yeah. not, they're not sort of hearing it or putting the pieces together. Yeah. Um, that's wonderful when you're working with someone in the audience and they have the wife and the man, and they're talking about his mom, for example. They go, I don't know. And she and the wife go, yes, yes, that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> so. right. Yeah, so it's happened. And there was one of the demonstrations at Arthur the College, and I can't remember who did the reading. But uh, so it was my friend from Sweden. It was her mom and her grandmother came in together. And then her grandmother was talking to um, the, demo, the person who was demonstrating and said, you know, there's four flowers. He kept saying there are four flowers. And my friend was like, she could not remember what that meant. But then, at, and she said, no, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't recognize it. And then later that evening, she said, oh my gosh, my grandmother, she had three sisters. There were four girls and they were all named after flowers. So there were the four yeah. flowers. So the medium was absolutely correct. That was demonstrating in front of a hundred people. And here's my friend saying, no, I don't recognize that because yeah. it didn't, it didn't come to her at that time when she didn't recognize that message. So there are times when the medium can be right. And the person is just not recognizing the ginger cookie. So let's talk about how, how did you end up in mediumship how did you go down that path ah oh, it's a long story i'm gonna to try to make it as short as i can but <laughs> from the beginning i always had a death wish and i never saw i had a depth within me and uh, i was always soul searching so to speak but i didn't know what to look for my grandma was actually quite religious and my mom and dad is atheist so for me i brought up that everything that's not down to us, it's nonsense. So I just have this empty feeling within me. And I, you know, if you talk about that, they just think, ah, come on, it's not so bad. You have a good life. You're, a happy, you're in a happy place. You don't have anything to complain about. And I didn't really, it was just a hole in my heart. So when you have a hole in your heart, you're searching. And for me, I think I was, filling my, my hole up with love in the beginning. So when I met my first uh, boyfriend, where I had my older son with, I thought, this is it, I'm happy now. But, you know, after six, seven years, you realize you still have that emptiness in your heart. So you divorce and you find another man and you're happy for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> and then you realize, no, it's not the man who gives me the happiness. But I was lucky there because my father-in-law then, he was into spiritualism. So he brought me down to the spiritualist society in Karlstad where I live in Sweden. And for the first time when I went into that room and in that atmosphere, I felt that this is what I've been looking for. And it was just magic in a way. And then the hard work starts, of course. <laughs> <laughs> So it was actually my father-in-law introduced me and thought that this would be probably suits you, Mia. Yeah. And how did you end up going through 
uh, Arthur Finde College and the Spiritualist National Union. What does all that training involve? Because you uh, mentioned that you are um, hold a certificate from SNU. Yeah. Um, what does that involve, holding a certificate from SNU? What's the training like? Well, I think it's very different today since I took it. I think I actually had an easy way when I took it. Because I remember we had a book when we did the theory and uh, someone was marking if you did well on the theory. And then when, when that was done, you have to go down to the Arthur Finlay College and you have um, uh, an exam in front of the, the teachers who's going to judge you. They give you a theoretical exam uh, with your voice, not on paper. You speak to them uh, about different things and they ask you a lot of questions. And I did a little bit of an inspirational talk from something I read on the paper, you know, and then you do the demonstration and you have, I had to have two links who was uh, okay and also an inspirational talk or an address as we say in England. And that's how I came through and I think today it's a lot more to do to become the CSNU than I had to do. So I went in on the easy way, so to speak. <laughs> So when you're when you say you're demonstrating, what do you mean by that? What what is that? Uh, it means that uh, you're standing on the platform in front of a lot of people. So and I love that. I, I like the challenge and I like the rush of the energy. For if you're doing a good mediumistic contact, I think it should last about seven eight minutes. After that, the audience get tired, you know, get bored, move on. You know, you're too long with one. <laughs> And um, I just love the excitement of uh, pinpointing with my evidence that only one in the audience, maybe, when there are 100, as you know, at Dr. Finley College, mm -hmm. can recognize your information and you work from there. So um, demonstrating is in front of a lot of people. Private sitting is just one-to-one. -one. Right. <clears throat> and when you say when you have a link, what do you mean by that? For those that's that are that's not familiar. when I'm connecting to the, to the spirit world, when I talk, for example, with your mom or your dad. or Right, so you, can, uh -huh. so you have a link. You have a link now to the spirit in the spirit world. Yeah. You're yeah. linking up. So can anyone learn how to be a medium? I believe so. Uh, I used to have an expression and... Uh, because back in time, they talked about the gift. If you're lucky, you have the gift to be a medium. And I believe if I would lucky to have a gift of being a medium, it means that God has favorites. And I don't believe in that. I believe you're all equal. I do believe in talent, though. And so I think everyone can train to understand how to interpret energy from the spirit world. And then I think there's a talent to maybe not only being good but maybe being very good at it but i think everyone can learn to connect to the spirit world yes that's a, that's really good news because a lot of people you know a lot of people have spiritual experiences but then they they just think that oh there was just a coincidence or maybe it's all in my head um but i i believe that too that we all have this ability and it's just a matter of opening up that that channel and and using that information um, I know you also do uh, what's called psychic art or spirit art. Yes. So can you talk about that, you know, spirit art? Do you, do you actually see the spirit when you're communicating? No, not at all. Uh, and it's a quite interesting journey because I couldn't draw whatsoever in the beginning. And the first ever sitting I went to, uh, a medium told me, color would be important for your Mia and I couldn't understand what they meant. The second reading I took, color would be very important for you Mia and I couldn't understand it, you know. I had no artistic abilities. I didn't thought so at that time. I realized I have some now. And uh, <laughs> it ended up actually, I was with the International Spiritualist Federation and they had a yearly congress and it was at the Finley College, 1998. And I was lucky enough to see three different spirit artists that week. And uh, one was doing portraits, the other one was doing uh, with charcoal, the other one was doing portraits with um, soft pastels and did a little bit of symbolism around the face. And the third one was doing orographs. And I thought, ah, now I know what I'm going to do. 
So when I came home, I started to do my own autograph and was practicing, practicing, practicing. And after a couple of years, suddenly I had a couple of eyes coming into my autograph, suddenly I had a nose and suddenly faces was turning up. Not very pretty though, they, they were not pretty. So I, I always say symbolically, this is someone from the spirit who is inspired or something like that. But slowly but surely, from 98 to now, I've been practicing with doing the portraits. And uh, you know, I read a lot of books to look at different, uh, how they was drawing. I never took a class huh? and then I actually went back to Dr. Finley College to one of the teachers there at the time. It was Alan Stuttle. And he said to me, if you have a spirit artist influence you, I want you to do the portrait with your left hand. And I'm right-handed. And that was the best portrait I ever done so far. <laughs> and that's when I learned a new technique for myself. So the influence I have from the spirit world who who inspires me, he experimented a lot with me. At what time I could see the face on the paper before I started to draw. But because I don't have the skill of draw, I messed it up. It was not that easy, <laughs> you know. And at one time he gave me pictures within my mind to influence me how to be, do a bigger nose or a longer shape of the face. and. But that didn't work out so well either because then my mind came into it. And I think that's everything with mediumship. You have to know your mind and how to get out of the way. So today when I'm doing it, I don't feel, I don't see, I don't, nothing. I just focus on one little piece at a time of the portrait. I focus on one eye, I focus on the mouth, I'm focusing on the side. I don't look at the whole face, so to speak. And the more I can get away from it, I can stand talking to you while I'm drawing and I will probably do a better likeness of the spirit and then when I'm with it. Wow, what a talent. Um, when you draw the orographs, yeah. how do you, do you see um, the colors around the person or do you feel the colors or how do you know what to draw? Both actually. Uh, in the beginning when I started, I didn't see the colors. I just uh, studied the aura, but I couldn't see anything. But I tried and I looked and whatever <laughs> color come to me, I started to work with. And I think I've been working with the aura graph for maybe two, three years before the colors started to come forward. And then I could see maybe two colors from time to time and suddenly I could see three colors. And even today, I can't see them all the time. It comes and goes. And it's also easier to see the colors if you're, if I have a white background behind you, for example. But today, I don't need to see them because I know today with the energy. So it's a feeling about it as well. So people who are interested in learning more about um, drawing orographs, uh, what would be your advice to them? Just practice, practice, practice. I mean, uh, I mean, this kind of sound horrible because you're supposed to, uh, what do you call it, advertise yourself and things like that. But <laughs> no, you know, because if I look at myself, I've done maybe three courses in spirit art. The rest I've been practicing at home. Practice, practice, and bringing them into my sittings and experimenting with them and told the sitter, this is an experiment, you know. So I believe that, uh, yes, of course, now and then, but th the most work you do at home by yourself with your spirit artist. And would you say that that is the same to open up the channel to be a medium? Or how would people <laughs> op open those doors if they feel that they have an ability or they feel that their grandmother is around them and but they don't know how what to do next what would what advice would you give to these people well this is hard because personally i know a lot of mediums who talk to their beloved ones you know but i can't talk to my beloved ones because my mind is always questioning if this is what i want to hear if this is what i like to hear you know so when it comes to my own relatives i, I never talk to them i just go with the feeling of love 
from them, if I should be honest. Uh, and I think when you speak to your own, you're not objective, not at all. It's always easier to read someone else where you don't know anything about. But I mean, as a spirit artist, there was a lady or a teacher at the college who wanted me to be specialized in spirit art, but I refused that at that time because if I would draw your father and you say, what does he want? And then I say to you, well, you have to find a medium now then. That's not fun. <laughs> so I want to be able to do both. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so let's just talk a little bit about I know that you wrote a book. Can you tell us a little bit what the book is about and why you wrote it? Well, it is a biography and it's a very naked one. Uh, people who know me and read it now, they don't understand how I could have been so naive, so stupid. <laughs> and, uh, but if you're living with a narcissist and a psychopath, it's very easy to forget yourself you know you are under his power and for me this medium that I met uh, he came from England and it was a medium and for me I think I fell in love with the illusion of what he represented uh, because like I said I had a death wish I was looking for the purpose of life the happiness in life he came along and he was a very good medium and a very good trans healer at the time but I believe his uh, sickness, if you should call it like that, and uh, took over. And in the end, he abused me in every way you can imagine. And, uh, but the worst thing, and that I still feel sometimes I haven't healed properly, is that he abused me spiritually. Everything else I can deal with, but the spiritual hurt was so traumatic and especially that he used his trance work he wasn't in trance but he pretended he was in trance towards the end and abused a lot of women the youngest one was 12 years old and he got five years in prison so he was a very sick man so and the guilt i had that i didn't realize that i didn't see it so the book is all about never trust the medium you know never trust the medium because Every medium will think they're right. I will think I'm right because that's my conscious level at the moment. But no one can be on the same conscious level. So I find it extremely important that everyone questioning us medium and listen to their own heart and what's correct for them. Because it's very easy to put the medium on the pedestal and we don't belong there whatsoever. And that's my experience. I put them on a pedestal and I thought it was great and wonderful and it turned out to be the worst kind you can ever imagine so that's what the book is about it's a warning to everyone who is looking for happiness within spirituality wow um what a journey you have had it's interesting that you mentioned never trust a medium because it's uh it's like i say to people never trust a doctor <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting um because there is something there, like you said, uh, people put people on a pedestal yeah. and it's the same uh, within the yoga industry and people, you know, there are big yoga spiritual yeah, so leaders. The big, uh, big yeah. Yoga. yeah, right. And it's oh. they're abusing their power. And yeah. it's so easy for people to think that uh, these people are very special, like a doctor, a surgeon, a nurse, a medium, a yoga instructor. It's all the same. And it's, yeah. uh, I love how you have that warning to people never to trust, trust the medium because it is the same uh, yeah. with everything in society that we do. Um, so that's very good advice. Is that a book in English by any chance or is it just in Swedish? Unfortunately, it's, it's only in Swedish. It's only in <laughs> Swedish right now. So for all you listeners in Sweden, go check out <laughs> her book. <laughs> yeah, it's on every audio. audio whatever you call it, uh, Netflix, no, um, Storytel, BookBeat, you know, all of them, so mm -hmm. they can read and listen and read if they like. And, what, and what's the title of it in Swedish? Sex Healer. The Sex Healer, because he abused uh, with his healing. And, uh, but the, what do you call it, the 
the company, how, how do you say that in English? God, that the, the, gives out the book. The oh, publisher? the publisher? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They uh, uh, decided the title. I had nothing to say about it. All right. For me, the title, if I had to, it would have been Fooled or Blessed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like because, that. Because uh, even though I got fooled a lot, I'm very blessed with that experience today. So. And why would you say that you are blessed? Because it has helped me to find myself and not put my life in someone else's. And I don't live through my man, I live through myself, and my man is a bonus today. My partner is a bonus and my friend. It's not something I try to please all the time. We please each other, so to speak. <laughs> it's my journey. I'm not just a, a doll to play with anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful advice to all the <laughs> listeners. Um, how can people work with you if people would like to schedule a reading with you or a session with you and, and contact somebody in the spirit world? How do they get a hold of you? Well, they just go to my webpage, Mi Ottoson, and uh, there is an email address where they can contact me if they like. So the web address is M I A O T T O S S O N dot S E. Mia yeah. Uh So yeah, if you just go to that website, um, you will be able to find the contact information. There should be an email. I believe the email is medium at Mia Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Um, to schedule a reading with her, Mia is absolutely amazing. I've had uh, readings from Mia myself at Arthur Finley College, and she was just truly amazing, and just blew my mind. So. Um, go check out her website. I feel an impression on me. <laughs> <laughs> she is amazing. So I'm going to put you on the pedestal right now. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to thank you so much, Mia, for coming on to the podcast today. And everyone, go check out her website. Thank you so much for having me, Lotte. It was a blessing. <laughs> no, thank you so much for coming on. I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of Dr. Lottie, Science with Soul. Make sure you are subscribed so you will be notified of new episodes as they become available. To book a session with me or to sign up for a workshop or to see me as a physician, please visit drlottie.com or divinespiritualessence.com. My book, Med School After Menopause, The Journey of My Soul, is available online at Amazon as well as other online platforms worldwide.